it's live yeah we are live we are live okay perfect uh, good evening friends uh, welcome to indian arthroscopy society webinar today it's on ankle instability and we have a master in ankle arthroscopy and minimally invasive ankle surgery dr jody vega from barcelona spain dr vega is uh, president of uh, uh, minimally invasive uh, surgery for ankle and foot i must thank uh, uh, Dr. Abhishek for arranging this webinar. Uh, on the Indian panel, we have experts of ankle arthroscopy, Dr. Sramendu Samanta, who is secretary of the Indian Arthroscopy Society, as well as Dr. Sundar Rajan, who is past president of the Indian Ankle and Foot Society and current joint secretary of Indian Arthroscopy Society. So a senior member of Indian Arthroscopy Society as well on the panel. Let us hear Dr. Jodi Vega. Uh, thank, uh, thank you, Jodi, for joining in from Barcelona. Uh, it's the honor of Indian Arthroscopy Society to hear your uh, expertise on foot and ankle. Uh, something which is uh, pretty new in India. We do have some surgeons doing it, a uh, good amount of ankle work. But most of the average arthroscopy surgeons still find it difficult to go into ankle and foot and other minimally invasive uh, procedures in the ankle. So if you can share your presentation and we would love to have your uh, thoughts about this uh, problem. I will I will request Dr. Obisek to uh, say a few words about Abhishek. Uh, if you Dr. can just kindly yeah. introduce just uh, introduce Dr. Jodi is there from ASB is uh, the secretary of the association and the member of the Indian Arthroscopy Society. I welcome you for this webinar. It is really a great honor that you have been agreed for this, and I am really grateful that Obisek has arranged this meeting for us. And we love to hear from you and learn new many new techniques. Thank you, Jodi. Good evening. Thank you. Uh, uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, I welcome you for all for the 61st webinar of uh, Indian Arthroscopy Society. It's my privilege and honor to welcome our guest speaker, Dr. Jordi Vega from Barcelona, uh, to speak about the new concepts and treatment in ankle instability. Dr. Jordi Vega is an associate professor in the University of Barcelona, Spain, and he also practices in Lausanne, Switzerland. He is the current president of uh, Minimally Invasive Foot and Ankle Society. He is the chief of European Foot and Ankle Society Research Committee. Uh, he, he is an avid researcher and he has introduced uh, the concepts of ankle micro instability and the concepts of lateral fibulotalocalcaneal ligament complex and many others. Uh, he, is he is also credited with the development of many novel foot and ankle all inside arthroscopy techniques. Uh, to name a few all inside lateral and medial ligament repair which he will be talking to us today endoscopic fibula groove deepening uh, to treat perineal tendon instability and many others. Uh, he has published close to 100 international papers and he has contributions in many international books. He has been the co-editor of the foot and ankle special issue in the KSSTA uh, Journal of ESCA. So with this brief introduction, I request Jordi, Dr. Jordi Vega to enlighten us with this novel concepts of ankle instability and all inside uh, arthroscopic ankle techniques. All, all over to you, sir. So thank you, thank you uh, uh, for this introduction. Uh, I hope that everyone is safe uh, with this pandemic. And uh, first of all, uh, it is a great honor for me uh, to participate in this uh, Indian Arthroscopy Society webinar about ankle arthroscopy. Uh, it's, uh, it's great for me to be for the first time uh, talk with uh, for you, for your society. And especially you, Dr. Nerulka, uh, thank you for the invitation. So, uh, if it's okay for you, I will. I want to share my screen. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay, it's here. Okay, can you see it? Yes. Yeah. We can. Okay, it. let me uh, let me move a little bit this. Okay. Okay. So, um, I will talk about instability of the ankle. It is a common consequence uh, after an ankle sprain. Uh, uh, let me see what's happened here. Okay. Oh, okay, now it's working. Okay, you can see here, this is a very common problem. You can see here Serena Williams in the last uh, US Open. Uh, in the semi semifinal, uh, she uh, twists the ankle. So that means it's a very common problem. And we know that uh, about 10 to 12% of people that uh, sprain their ankle they will develop an ankle instability. As you know, um, ankle instability is not a minor, a minor problem. 
okay? Uh, there is a lot of uh, joint alterations as a result of an ankle instability. Not only uh, degenerative changes, but also soft tissue impeachment, chondral problems, osteophytes, deltoid injuries, they can be as a result of an ankle instability. Yeah, you can see here an example. This is a young patient that in 1996, they have for the first time an ankle sprain. And 20 years later, he comes to the consultation with this X-ray. So now the problem is not this, this instability. The problem is the arthrosis. And we have to try to avoid this evolution. Uh, despite that the ankle sprain is a common problem, usually uh, most of the surgeons, they think that they have no consequences. And we know that this is not uh, like this. In the United States, there are 300 uh, million people and they have every year 11 million people sprain the ankle every year in the United States. In my country, we have uh, one million and a half, but in the India, you have four times uh, more people that in the United States sprain in the ankle every year. 49 million people in the India sprain the ankle every year. So, and we know that after an ankle sprain, there is always, always an injury of the ankle ligaments, of the lateral ligament complex. So in the past, we thought that people that have some complaints in the ankle after an ankle sprain, they had a soft tissue impeachment, but we currently know that most of these patients, they have a micro instability. They have a minor ankle problem, a minor ligament problem as a result of this ankle sprain. What is exactly micro instability of the ankle? This is a minor ankle instability resulting from an ankle sprain. Uh, the patient, when has symptoms, they have the same symptoms that they explain with the soft tissue impeachment, anterolateral pain, instability feeling, recurrence of ankle sprain. And the problem is an isolated injury of the superior fascicle of the anterior talofibular ligament. So to understand what is exactly micro instability, you have to uh, understand the anatomy. You can observe here, this is an over dissection of the lateral ligament complex. You can observe uh, the bones and the ligaments. We remove the rest of the structures that are around these ligaments and the bone. Here, you can observe the anterior talofibular ligament with these two fascicles, superior and inferior. In between, you have this gap. In this gap, there is an artery, the perineal artery. Then when you have an ankle sprain, if the energy of that sprain arrives to the artery, this artery is broken, and then you will develop this kind of hematome. So when you have this kind of hematome, you know that for sure the superior fascicle is injured. Maybe not the inferior, but for sure the superior fascicle is injured. Then you have the calcaneofibular ligament, and then if you rotate a little bit more, you will see the posterior talofibular ligament. But uh, as I say to you before, this is an over dissection. The reality is that you have here fibers of connections, you have tendons, you have everything, you have the capsule. If we maintain all these structures and we inject the capsule with some air, you will see here, then we can limit exactly where is uh, the capsule. So now the joint is injected. And then we are stuck to dissect at the limit of the capsule. And then you will see when the uh, air comes out, you will see that there is a ligament inside. Okay, so this ligament that you, that you can see inside, you see now, here, this ligament is the superior fascicle of the anterior talofibular ligament. So, as this is an intraarticular ligament, you can observe when you scope the ankle here. This is the lateral garden. So uh, we did an uh, anatomical study with uh, uh, this philosophy, and we observed that this superior fascicle of the anterior telofibular ligament has a close relation with the distal fascicle of the tibiofibular ligament, which is the bust ligament. This relation, you can observe the relation when you scope the ankle. 
in dorsiflexion without distraction, you go to the lateral gutter and you can observe this image. This is the normal view. You will see the basal ligament and then in continuity, you can see the anterior talofibular ligament superior fascicle. So this continuity is the normality. If there is any gap in between or there is any uh, uh, alteration of the direction of the ligament, that means that there is an injury. In contrast to this superior fascicle, you have the inferior fascicle that has a close relation with the calcaneofibular ligament. In addition, they have some connecting fibers in between. These connecting fibers in between make that when you move the inferior fascicle of the anterior talofibular ligament, the calcaneofibular ligament is also moving. So that means that both ligaments, inferior fascicle of the anterior talofibular ligament and calcaneofibular ligament, they work as a functional unit because of these connecting fibers. That's that we name the lateral fibulotalocalcanal ligament complex. If we observe this uh, video, uh, we maintain here the connecting fibers, and you will see how we make a zoom of this area. You will see how the superior fascicle is relaxed in dorsiflexion and tight in plantar flexion while the inferior fascicle, the calcaneofibular ligament, because of these connecting fibers, is always tight. So, we have the superior fascicle, which is a different structure than the inferior fascicle. The superior fascicle is intraarticular, and it is relaxed in dorsiflexion and tight in plantar flexion while the inferior fascicle, the calcaneofibular ligament and its connecting fibers are an, ex, an extra articular structure and is always tight. So that's why we uh, propose a new terminology, a new anatomical terminology of these ligaments. The real anterior talofibular ligament is just the superior fascicle, while the inferior fascicle, the calcaneofibular ligament and its connecting fibers they form this lateral fibrotalocal kind of ligament complex. According to this uh, uh, philosophy, in my experience, more than 90% of patients that we treat because of an ankle instability, they have only an injury of the anterior talofibular ligament superior fascicle. So that means that most of the patients that we treat because of an instability, they have a migraine instability. What are the clinical implications of this new philosophy? So the injury of this superior fascicle of the anterior talofibular ligament will provoke a micro instability. As this fascicle is an intraarticular structure, when it is injured, it will never heal because intraarticular ligaments never heal. In contrast to this uh, superior fascicle, the lateral fibulotalocalcanial ligament complex when it's injured, the patient will develop a micro instability, the classical chronic ankle instability. This complex is an extraarticular structure. So if there is an injury of this structure and then you immobilize the patient, probably the patient will heal the problem and they will never develop a micro instability. So then when you have this kind of patients with this big hematome, please immobilize. So then, uh, the, the instability as a result of the injury probably will disappear. In fact, uh, most of the patients, the instability, the acute instability will disappear after three to four weeks of immobilization. So um, this uh, concept of micro instability has changed the classical classification of ankle instability. Classically, we have uh, two groups, mechanical instability and functional instability. Mechanical instability means that you have a ligament injury and functional instability means that you have not ligament injury, you have another alteration, probably neurological alterations that provoke this instability feeling. So from now we know that the chronic ankle instability is the real mechanical instability, but we have three groups. We have lateral instability, patients with medial instability, and then we can have patients with rotational instability, which is a new group. Rotational instability means that patients with, that have a lateral, chronic lateral problem can, secondary to this lateral problem, injure the medial uh, ligament. 
So patients with rotational instability, they describe an abnormal increase of talar rotation within the mortise. And as I say you uh, now, it's a, a secondary problem to a chronic lateral instability or micro instability. They can also develop a rotational instability. Patients that have symptoms, they uh, usually, in addition to the lateral problems, they have medial ankle complaints. And the tear that they have is an open book anterior deltoid ligament injury. So you can observe here this patient, this is the uh, medial malleolus. And then you can see, observe here the deltoid ligament and you can see this injury that we can open as an open book. So uh, one of the problems that we have with rotational instability is that it is quite common and not always the patient has medial symptoms. Uh, and it is estimated that uh, between 10 to 15 uh, uh, percent of, cr of uh, chronic ankle instability or micro instability, they have uh, uh, this deltoid open book injury. And just uh, uh, about 25 percent of these patients, they have medial symptoms. So we have more uh, about 75 percent of patients that will never have symptoms. But you, you need to treat uh, this problem. Otherwise, if you never treat the medial problem, the patient can develop in the future some medial symptoms. So then we have uh, this chronic ankle instability, lateral, medial, or rotational. And now we have also micro instability. Most of the patients with a real micro instability, they were included in the functional instability in the past. So probably we have more percentage of micro instability problems that we know. And then if we have, have, if we have uh, micro instability, we will have macro instability. So how we have to diagnose the ankle micro instability? History of the patients with uh, recurrent ankle sprains with uh, uh, mild or, or poor um, ankle sprain in the past, anterolateral pain, instability feeling, they will probably have a micro instability of the ankle. We, we try to uh, uh, diagnose this patient with this maneuver that we are trying to validate. This is a tibiotal posterior driver test. Most of the people here in Europe, they call this maneuver as the Vegas test. The patient is lying on the, on the, uh, on the table and then the, the hip and the knee are flexed and the foot and ankle in this position. And then we provoke a posterior driver test. In this position, the uh, superior fascicle is tight. And if we make the slight internal rotation is uh, more, more tight. And then we isolate the superior fascicle and then we provoke this posterior translation. I repeat again. Yeah, here, this posterior translation. And if you compare with the contralateral side, they mean that probably the patient has a micro instability because a rupture of the superior fascicle of the anterior talofibular ligament. A stress radiographs doesn't work for micro instability, makes no sense to obtain these uh, stress radiographs. Uh, as you know, as an ankle mechanical instability, secondary problems can be observed in these patients. And sometimes, uh, patients come to the consultation because of the secondary problems, not because of the micro instability. So then you have to think that patients with soft tissue impeachment, chondral or osteochondral problems, uh, 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 osteophytes, deltoid ligament injury, lower bodies, and so on, maybe the origin of these problems is a micro instability, and you have to treat at the same time the origin of the problem. So you have to treat the ligament problem. So you can observe here, this is one case with a soft tissue impeachment. You can see all these synovitis in the lateral gutter. And then when we remove all these synovitis, we can observe this. This is an injury of the superior fascicle. There's a stump of the uh, ligament, which is disinserted from the fibula. So then this patient, they, it has, uh, it has a, a micro instability. Uh, MRI ultrasound, MRI doesn't work because uh, a standard MRI is usually not useful to observe 
the anterior talofibular ligament superior fascicle. As you can see here, most of the radiologists, they say, no, the ligament is perfect. Yes, it is true. This is the inferior fascicle. This is not the superior fascicle. So that is not recognized the superior fascicle in a standard MRI. Probably we have to modify the standard MRI just to diagnose the superior fascicle injury. Probably patients uh, uh, are much more uh, diagnosed if you are really training with ultrasound. So uh, ultrasonography could be a good idea to diagnose these patients. The problem is that you need a lot of training to uh, diagnose with ultrasound. Uh, currently, the gold standard diagnosis is the arthroscopy. So you know that the patient has uh, for sure a problem. Uh, it is not possible to observe the ligament injury on MRI. Maybe you are not training in ultrasound, so then scope the patient. And then you have to go to the lateral gutter, in dorsiflexion, never distraction, and then you need to see this correlation between the distal fascicle of the uh, uh, anterior tibial fibular ligament, the basal ligament, and the superior fascicle of the anterior talofibular ligament. This is the normality. So we can classificate this uh, microinstability in four types. First type is very common in patients with uh, uh, hyperlaxity. They have a, a, a small injury that is a continuity, but you can observe a small injury in the insertion, in fibular insertional area. The type two is a partial tear uh, at the level of the insertion of the fibular insertion. You can have a medial detachment or proximal detachment. This is the most common type, this, uh, the 2A. You have the third type with a completely tear of the uh, superior fascicle. And then you have a fourth type that is observed in, in less than 5% of the patients with, where there is a resorption, completely resorption or partial resorption of the ligament. So once you have the diagnosis, you have to treat the patient, of course. And uh, I will propose a, an arthroscopic treatment. The real treatment is just to repair the ligament. You can do it uh, by an open procedure. Why not? You can do the open uh, bostrum procedure through this kind of uh, incision with uh, knot or knotless anchors. But you have to know that as a mechanical instability, you probably will have secondary intraticular problems. Uh, uh, about 60, between 60 or 90 percent of patients with chronic ankle instability or micro instability, they have they have other intraticular problems. So that's why most of the uh, surgeons they recommend to evaluate first. Uh, arthroscopically the ankle, treat secondary problems, and then finally treat the ligament problems. But of course, if you are doing uh, an arthroscopy to evaluate and to treat secondary problems, why not to treat at the same time arthroscopically the ligament problem? We have a lot of uh, uh, options. In the last uh, five to 10 years, uh, it appears a lot of uh, arthroscopic techniques, minimal invasive techniques, percutaneous techniques, we can summarize in these four types, arthroscopic string cage, uh, a mix between percutaneous and arthroscopy, and all inside, all arthroscopic repair, and then an arthroscopic reconstruction. The truth is that here in Europe, most of the surgeons doing arthroscopy for ligament problems in the ankle, they do the all inside arthroscopic repair. So I will explain this procedure. Uh, you can observe this as a video uh, to summarize this uh, technique. You can download this uh, video in the GBGS Essential Techniques. So you have, uh, let me see here, you have the landmarks, joint line, tibialis anterior, lateral side of the extensor, the nerve, and then you have anterior medial portal. The anterior lateral portal has to be a little bit distal to the joint line. Where is here? Here, you can observe. And then you need an accessory portal. This accessory portal is at about uh, 1.5 centimeters from the tip of the fibula and just anterior at this point. So you can observe here in the next uh, video uh, where is exactly the accessory portal. 
you can observe here is the injury and the needle. This is the accessory portal. Then you have to grasp with a, this is a suture passer. You have to grasp the uh, ligament. This uh, uh, suture passer has an etinol. You take out the etinol from the accessory portal. And then you have to change this accessory portal with this uh, suture. It's a high resistance suture. You can use also a tape if you want, suture tape. Uh, the suture is double in the middle. And then there is a loop, there is two ends. When you take uh, the nitinol, the sutures comes in the, into the joint. And then you have to take the sutures from the accessory portal from the anterolateral portal. Then you will have from the anterolateral portal, the loop and the ends. And then you have to introduce one of the ends inside the loop. And by pushing the ends, the loop comes down and grasp the ligament. Okay, here it is. So next, once you have the ligament grasp, you have to debride the area of the footprint. And then you have to perform the tunnel for your anchor. You can use uh, knotted anchors. So then if you use knotted anchors, you have to introduce first the anchor, of course. But I, I would love to use uh, knotless anchor. So uh, this is the point for the uh, tunnel for your anchor. It's just at the distal point of the basset ligament. And this uh, direction is parallel to the plantar sole and parallel to the uh, joint between the fibula and the uh, talus. And then dorsiflexion, a little bit of version of the foot, and by impactation, you introduce the ankle. So once you have the ligament repair, you can cut the sutures. <clears throat> so through this technique, you can also treat uh, patients with uh, macro instability. So you can observe here, this is a completely tear of the superior fascicle and the lateral talocalcan ligament complex. If you go to the lateral gutter, usually because of the relation between the peroneal tendons and the calcanofibular ligament. Uh, when there is an injury of the calcanofibular ligament, there is a rupture of the synovial sheath of the peroneal tendons. So then if you go to the lateral gutter, you can see the peroneal tendons here just before crossing to the lateral side. So then you have here in this window, peroneal tendons and beside the calcanofibular ligament. So if you can observe the calcaneofibular ligament, you can grasp it. So then we use this uh, automatic suture passer. <coughs> we grasp the calcaneofibular ligament. And then we can grasp the superior fascicle of the anterior talofibular ligament and all the structures that you have between the superior fascicle and the calcaneofibular ligament is the inferior fascicle of the calcaneofibular ligament. So then you have to grasp the three structures, calcanofibular ligament, inferior fascicle, and superior fascicle of the anterior talofibular ligament. So then these two, calcanofibular ligament and inferior fascicle, they form the lateral fibrotal calcaneal ligament complex. So we have to reattach both with the same anchor. And then we debride the footprint and we introduce these two sutures, four sutures, for these two ligaments with the same anchor in the front bit area for the uh, for the uh, lateral fibrotal calcaneal ligament complex. So then once you have the, the, uh, this ligament complex reattached, you cut the sutures, and then you have to reattach in a separate, with a separate anchor, the superior fascicle of the anterior talofibular ligament. So here you have the ligament complex repair, and now we have to repair the superior fascicle. You do the same, okay? This is not the same course. 
And it's exactly the same that uh, I showed you before. <coughs> so I will show you the result. It's here, okay? So now you can cut the sutures and all the, all the injury is repaired. So you can observe here when case, if I complete it there, and after the surgery, you can observe how it's absolutely stable. So the post-op in these cases, we usually mobilize for three to four weeks, partial rebearing after two weeks, and after these three to four weeks of immobilization, the patient is sent to the physiotherapist to start physiotherapy. Uh, usually patients can start to do some uh, sports at two months, but really soft sports. And we never allow patients to uh, start contact sports uh, uh, at least after three months. So we have some problems with the ligament repair. We have some limitations. Of course, if you have no ligament remnant to repair, it is impossible to repair. And this is the only indication, in my uh, uh, opinion, is the only indication for ligament reconstruction, for a ligament plasty. In the other cases, poor ligament remnant, uh, hyperlaxity, high demanding patients, or other circumstances that fast mobilization is required, you can use augmentations. So you repair the ligament and you augment the, the repair to protect your repair. You have two options. You have biological augmentations and non-biological augmentations. The classical uh, augmentation, biological augmentation, is the Boston Gould. And you can do the Boston Gould arthroscopically, of course. Then you have another uh, new option, which is use the distal fascicle of the anterior tibial fibula ligament. That means use the basal ligament. For the Boston Gould, the arthroscopic Boston Gould, you usually use the uh, inferior extensor retinaculum. After repair the ligament, you have to perform an extra endoscopy. And then you localize this uh, uh, retinaculum. <coughs> and once you localize, you grasp uh, the retinaculum with some sutures. This sutures comes from an anchor that you introduce first uh, in the fibula. And then once the retinaculum is uh, grasped, you make the knots with the idea that the retinaculum comes to the fibula and uh, is attached to the fibula. So this is the idea. The problem of this technique is that you need always to have this superolateral band. If your retinaculum has not this superolateral band, so then the retinaculum will never arrive to the fibula. If you do an open procedure and your retinaculum never arrives to the fibula, you can have a flap. But for the moment, we have not options to make this uh, flap arthroscopically. So <clears throat> not always when you do this uh, arthroscopic Boston Gould procedure, not always the retinaculum arrives to the fibula. And this is important to know. So you have the other option is to use the distal fascicle of the anterior tibial fibula ligament, which is this structure here, the basal ligament. You take this ligament with the suture passer, you have the ligament here. Then with the suture passer, you can uh, penetrate the ligament. And then this is uh, quite similar to uh, the all inside repair. You penetrate the ligament. There is an etinol. You take the etinol from the uh, uh, anterolateral portal and you change by a suture with the idea to grasp the ligament. So once you have the ligament grasp, you have to detach from the tibia and rotate, comes down and reattach in the talon neck. So this is the idea. Okay, so once you have the ligament rotate, you introduce a second anchor to reattach the ligament in the talon neck. 
So that's why you can protect your repair if you have a poor uh, ligament remnant. But you can use this uh, technique also if you can. If you have cases with just superior fascicle uh, injury that uh, is type four. I mean, is a reservation res of the ligament. There is not ligament, so you can use this technique. But uh, I prefer when it's possible to use the uh, non-biological augmentation with sutures or a suture tape. This is that we call the arthroscopic internal brace. And you can observe here, this uh, picture. We repair the ligament and with the same sutures, we augment and we do an internal brace. So how to do this arthroscopically? You can observe, we repair the ligament and then from the accessory portal, we take the sutures, this is a suture tape, and then we introduce again from the accessory portal to the anterolateral portal, extraticularly, never intraticularly. So you have here the sutures, and then you go outside the capsule, and you arrive to the anterolateral portal. You can see I love to use this kind of cannulas to protect the uh, superficial peroneal nerve from the sutures and from the instruments. So you can observe what happens extra -articularly. So we have the ligament is repair. Here we have the sutures. And then we take out the sutures from this accessory portal. And then once they are outside, we introduce again from this accessory portal to the anterolateral portal, but always extra -articular. And then once the sutures are in the anterior compartment, you take out the sutures from this uh, anterolateral portal. So then once you have the sutures in the anterolateral portal, you have to debride, localize the talar insertion of the anterior talofibral ligament. Here is the talar insertion and just, just anterior to this talar insertion, you debride a little bit the bone and then you do a tunnel directed to the medial malleolus. And then you introduce a second anchor here. This is very important that when you introduce the second anchor, never introduce the second anchor with the foot in, uh, with the ankle in dorsiflexion or neutral position. So the foot has to be always in plantar flexion. Although Otherwise, the patient ha can have some problems to plantar flex after surgery. So once you have the anchor introduced, you cut the sutures and the internal brace is done. And you can observe here, one anchor, ligament repair, and then a second anchor in the talon neck. So you can observe here one patient with this kind of instability. And then we do this kind of technique. And this is the result. And we can move the ankle from dorsiflexion to plantar flexion. So in these cases, the post-op is absolutely different. So we immobilize for, uh, uh, to have the patient some uh, post-op com comfortable just for a couple of days. And then the patient start physiotherapy, he can start the, the same week of the surgery, but usually we say to the patient to start five, six days after surgery. And the patient can uh, uh, do weight bearing, completely weight bearing uh, according to the tolerance. So in these cases, patients usually start to do some sport activity at about one month and a half, maybe two months. So you can observe this is uh, one of my last patients. One week post-op is the uh, right side. Uh, you can see no problems. Another patient, one month post-op, is running without problems. So what's the message to take home? Remember, after a mile, a mile ankle sprain, you will develop an injury of the superior fascicle of the anterior tabul, talofibular ligament. As it is an intraticular structure, it will never heal. A tear of this uh, superior fascicle can result in a minor degree of instability or micro instability. This is not a minor problem. 
and must be considered as a mechanical instability. And as a real mechanical instability, you will have concomitant intraticular problems if the problems comes uh, to a chronic situation. The recommendation in this case is, is the all inside ligament repair. After a severe ankle sprain, you will uh, injure the lateral pubertal ligament complex. Uh, if you mobilize, maybe you have some change to heal. Uh, the patients, if they never heal, they will develop a major degree of instability or the classical chronic ankle instability. Uh, this is a mechanical instability, of course, and you can develop in a chronic situation intraticular problems. You have to remember this. When you treat these patients, first uh, scope the ankle to treat the secondary problems, and then I will recommend to treat uh, through an arthroscopic uh, procedure the ligaments, but you can do an open brostrum procedure. And finally, uh, uh, the all inside is a reproducible and safe technique that provides an anatomical repair with all the advantages of the arthroscopic procedure. And you have to augment in some cases uh, for, uh, for problems with uh, remnant, remnant the, with a bad quality, patients with laxity or patients with a high, uh, uh, that required uh, an ankle motion very fast. And thank you for your attention. Uh, it was great to participate in this uh, webinar. I hope that uh, a lot of questions are waiting for me. Thank you. Yes, Jody, great talk. Can you share your screen, please? Okay. Uh, uh, Jody, it's uh, one of the great talk I've ever heard in uh, ankle instability uh, because it is uh, minimally invasive because we are arthroscopic guys. We are so excited to hear about uh, your uh, I mean, concepts of micro instability and macro instability. And of course, it's a beautiful demonstration of all the video techniques and you slowly, patiently well demonstrated. So I think it's one of the nicest talk I ever heard uh, and seen the arthroscopic techniques. Thank you for your uh, fantastic talk. Thank you. Thank you, my friend. Uh, Jody, there is a question from me. So most of the yeah. time, whenever uh, we see this chronic ankle instability, like yeah. uh, we have been uh, treating, like people say that when, whenever you see the chronic ankle instability, always repair this. Uh, along with the uh, your ATFL, also repair this calcareo fibular ligament. This is mandatory. What is your thought on that? What is my sorry? Uh, his question when, is: When you repair the chronic ankle instability, yeah, then you only don't don't repair like your this ATFL. Also repair the calcareo fibular ligament. Don't try to so, repair the calcareo fibular ligament in the chronic ankle. So when, when you scope an ankle instability. You always see if there is or not a calcaneal fibular ligament injury. So you go to the lateral gutter. If the lateral gutter is closed, so that means that you have only an uh, anterior total fibular ligament tear. If it's really open, you can go with your scope till the back of the ankle. That means that probably, probably the patient has a calcaneal fibular ligament injury. So in that cases, I always open a window in the area just to see the calcaneal fibular ligament. And then if you see the calcaneal fibular ligament, you can check the calcaneal fibular ligament. And if there is an injury, of course you have to repair. Okay. Yeah. You, you can, yeah, yeah. There are some uh, uh, studies that say that when you repair the anterior talofibular fibular ligament, you are repairing secondarily the calcaneal fibular ligament. This is true because there are the connecting fibers. The problem is that uh, the subtalar joint, it depends on the calcaneal fibular ligament. So when you treat just the anterior talar fibular ligament and there is an injury of the calcaneal fibular ligament, probably the tibiotalar problem is solved. You are treating the tibiotalar problem, but probably you are not treating the subtalar uh, problem. So in, in that cases, I will recommend, in case of doubt, I will recommend to treat the calcaneal fibular ligament too. Is there, uh, I have a couple of questions. Is there any way preoperatively can you uh, differentiate your micro instability from macro instability? It means uh, that ATFL alone or with your lateral fibrocalcinia complex? Yeah, this is not, uh, this is a good question. 
quite difficult to answer. Um, because some of the patients with micro instability, when you check the ankle, looks like a macro instability. And uh, yeah, it's quite difficult uh, to, to, with uh, exploration to know if there is a real macro instability or a, a micro instability. So uh, I think that uh, the, the percentage said that more than 90% of patients that you treat, they have a micro instability. Even if, when you explore, they have a big instability. So uh, you have to be prepared for both cases. So when I, when I do an arthroscopy, I probably know that the patient has just a superior fascicle injury of the anterior talofibular ligament, but sometimes I arrive and there is a completely tear of the uh, anterior talofibular ligament, superior inferior fascicle and calcaneal fibular ligament. So in that case, uh, I have to repair everything. But uh, preoperability is quite difficult to know. Do you, because, because this wasn't new to me, I never advise ultrasonography, I never advise ultrasonography for uh, this uh, superior fascicle. Or because most you, you just told us that uh, we know we can read the MRI in our own eyes, but never thought that that is not showing the superior fascicle. So, do you recommend that if you suspecting that the patient is not been happy and every time he is complaining pain on the lateral side, do you recommend? Uh, what is your recommendation of uh, this ultrasonography for the uh, your micro or the lateral complex pain? How you so, uh, Yeah. Uh, uh. I think that the best option for the patient is that the, uh, the own surgeon can do the ultrasonography. I know this is uh, quite difficult uh, even here in Spain uh, because uh, you have patients every 20 minutes or 15 minutes uh, and then you have to explore, you have to ask the patient what's the problem and finally you have to do the ultrasonography. Yeah, it's quite complex here. Uh, and in addition, you need some training. And this is not simple for surgeons to be training in ultrasonography. But uh, I know that some colleagues, for example, in the hand or in the hip, they use usually uh, ultrasonography. So why not foot and ankle surgeons to use ultrasonography in the consultation? Right. But uh, we, need, we need to change our mind, of course. I, I, I never do. I have one colleague beside my, uh, my consultation, then they can do uh, ultrasonography. So if they need an ultrasonography, I say to the patient, go to the other side. My colleague will do, he's a radiologist, specialized in ultrasonography, in, in, a, uh, in ultrasonography, and he's doing this ultrasonography. And sometimes I go there and I say, I need to see this ligament. Uh, Jody, even if you do an ultrasound to, or even if you suspect only micro instability, then it is fine. Then if what happens uh, if you have an osteochondralation or a peroneal pathology, is it necessary to do an MRI in all these cases? What do you do? I think, yeah, I think MRI, uh, in my opinion, MRI is absolutely necessary in all patients with any kind of instability. Because you need to know how is the rest of the ankle. So you need more information. You need to know if there is any uh, deltoid ligament problem, even if the patient has not pain in the deltoid problem, in the deltoid area, or uh, if you have any chondral problems. I always ask to obtain a, an MRI in my patients, always. Oh, very good. Judy, are you using the same probe for the shoulder with this uh, ankle or the different probe for the ankle? Ultrasound probe? Sorry? Sorry. Are you uh, using the same ultrasound probe for the shoulder for the ankle, or do you use many, uh, any other probe? The ultrasound probe. Do they use any different probe yeah. ultrasound? Uh, for yeah, that? yeah, yeah. It's it's necessary to use a specific uh, uh, zone. I, I I don't know exactly how is the the the, the size, but it's a small sound. Yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, I, I'm sorry, I, I, I don't know this technical aspect, but... Uh, we have to ask the radiologist, then they might be knowing this, okay. Yeah, yeah, it's, 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 not, it's, it's, not, it's, it's not possible to use uh, the standard song for this uh, kind of uh, the shoulder one. Shoulder study. One, the shoulder one can't no. be for the ankle, okay. No, no, not possible. You have to use a specific song, yeah. And uh, Jody, and our, especially for our 
general orthopedic surgeon or basic arthroscopic surgeon the basic question is when you see a first time ankle sprain if you think even if you suspect only an atfl tear how do you approach that patient how do you go about you say in acute acute yeah first time in acute so uh in acute first episode if there is a big hematoma i will always immobilize if there is not a big hematoma and the patient has some complaints i will immobilize just for comfort for the patient not for to treat the patient if there is no pain just a little bit swelling in the area i say to the patient okay you have a, an ankle sprain uh, go to the physiotherapist for 2 or 3 weeks and then back again just to check how is everything uh the the reality is that uh after 3 to 4 weeks of the uh, acute injury i usually check the patient and then if there is some complaints there is some kind of instability i will say to the patient that probably we will need to obtain an mri not now but in the future i will send again to the physiotherapist to continue physiotherapy and then it depends on the patient a uh, very active patient or some uh, professional players i will say in one month and a half if you have a still complaints maybe we have to think in a surgery in the rest of the population that not are professionals i will say okay continue with physiotherapy for 3 months and then after 3 months we will decide if we need to do something more than physiotherapy is there any uh, risk factor or do you do any test to identify which patients will prone for uh, recurrent ankle instability is there any way to find out i don't know <laughs> so sometimes is the feeling you know I, i sometimes the patients come to the consultation after an ankle sprain i talk with the patient and when the patient comes out and go home i think maybe this patient probably because the feeling is it doesn't work probably okay. probably would need a surgery but i have nothing it's just the feeling you know yeah. i know this is not very scientific but <laughs> yeah, this is the experience you know this is the experience is uh, some patients when they come to the consultation you know that probably all the physiotherapy you will do probably never works in the same gray zone the patient comes with a recurrent instability how do you differentiate from functional instability from your mechanical instability always sometimes it's just tough i think that probably uh, uh most of the patients that that come with this uh, minor symptoms i'm sure that they have a micro and not a functional Jody, have you, is there any role of uh, just any uh, anesthetic injection to check do you have you ever uh, recommend that do you ever recommend that so i never never i can say never but uh, usually i don't inject patients usually okay. because some people uh, some ankle surgeon they told that if you just give a shot and check whether the pain is going or not then you can diagnose but still yeah test uh, is the probably clinical examination is the key no yeah but uh, but uh, I, in my opinion when you inject the patient uh, is not for i think you can diagnose of course but diagnose of what of uh, synovitis micro instability of what so uh, if you inject it's just because you want to um, to uh, avoid a surgery a fast surgery Okay. So I have sometimes I have patients that want to have a surgery they never do physiotherapy in the past and they say okay 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 maybe you need to uh, go to the physiotherapist and they say physiotherapist no I want I want a, a fast recovery I went, okay so then in this cases I inject just to reduce the pain relax the patient and then send to the physiotherapist the main problem is our problem. country is that it is very very hard to convince the patient that you have got the instability and you have to go for the surgery people are rarely ready until unless he is a very active guy young guy is rarely ready for the any sort of surgery do you agree sundar yeah hey, absolutely because uh, 
Yes, uh, even uh, Jody said he operates mostly our highly active and athletic patients. And yeah. um, I think the, for the less active or uh, <clears throat> other common people, I, I think most of, the, most of the time you try to conserve. And I mean, yeah. they're also not really keen for surgery. I think Jody also may be doing the same. Yeah, yeah. So, so you have to think that uh, uh, all of, uh, uh, probably one of you have a micro instability because uh, it's very common to have an ankle sprain. Yeah. And uh, I, I always say the same, it is not necessary to make a surgery in all the patients. Otherwise it's crazy to have, uh, have thousands of patients yeah, okay. to treat the micro instability problem. So pro usually patients that have problems is because they are really active uh, uh, and they, they want to continue with this activity. If they decide to stop the activity, probably these complaints will disappear with time. But if you, they continue with activity, uh, probably they will continue with this uh, complaint. So in this case, you need to take a surgery. You need to take a decision. Uh, this is not life or, or, or death. It's just to reduce complaints. And in some cases, you have to protect the ankle for the future. For example, uh, a teenager, or very young patients, 18 years old, 20 years old, with uh, every six months one ankle sprain with some problems, but that they can do normal life. In these cases, I always recommend a surgery just to protect the ankle in the future, to avoid this, this uh, evolution to the arthrosis, okay? But in, in median age, uh, 40 years old, 45 years old, if you have not too much uh, complaints, you can avoid the surgery, but you have to know that you have a problem. Jody, there is also uh, told by uh, one of the stalwarts in foot and ankle, like they tell that because of the micro still ready, they advocate like a uh, single leg standing for 20 minutes in, in a day. So mm -hmm. do you uh, recommend this sort of uh, strengthening exercise or single leg standing for in 20 minutes in a whole in a day. Do you recommend yeah. this or what's your take? How you, how you do it? So I always recommend patients with micro instability problems that they never want to have a surgery is to have any activity because you need to your muscles, you need, you need your proprioception active. So then uh, uh, I recommend main patients, maybe not every day, but every two days to have some sport activity. I think this is more or less that you recommend, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, regarding this proprioception, ATFL is supposed to have uh, the proprioceptive uh, mechanism for, uh, which we depend upon. So does this, uh, uh, after the exercises, does it come back or has it been evaluated? Or even after the surgery, when you reconstruct the superior fascicle, uh, do they get the kind of uh, proprioception that they should get actually? Yeah, yeah. So uh, uh, the proprioception is absolutely necessary before and after surgery. So uh, uh, I always say to the patients, your physiotherapy now doesn't work, but after surgery, we will do exactly the same physiotherapy because oh. after surgery, it, 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 uh, 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 the, the ligament is repaired. So we have to recover this proprioception with the ligament repair. So what is the what is the common uh, physiotherapy which you do like uh, ask them to stand on one leg with closed eyes like that or what kind of proprioception test do you do for these kind of patients pre -op -op. So we we here in Spain is very common uh, to use this um, how do you say this this half ball you know and then yeah, start to uh, board. Uh, yeah, board. yeah yeah board. we usually use this yeah uh, we send to the patients to the, to the beach. If you have beach, that's a good idea. Work on the beach. This is possible here in Barcelona. Of course, if you live in Madrid, it's not possible. But here in Barcelona, uh, it's possible. So, and it's a, a, a nice way to recover is go to the beach. Uh, I have one more question. Like in uh, chronic ankle instability, I mean, is there any way that in preoperatively with the MRI or no to know the quality of the tissue ATFL to decide whether to do just to do a repair or an augmentation procedure? Yeah, excellent question. 
uh, the truth is that you know, you can know that if there is a good quality or bad quality, but you never will know how is the bad quality. You see, if it's really bad or just a little bit bad. So uh, I think that the, uh, in this case, the MRI is not useful. So uh, that what I do is, okay, I can see them on MRI, the ligament. Uh, I will check during surgery, how is the quality. Okay. And then uh, if, if, if you can grasp easily the ligament, that means that the ligament has a good quality. If you grasp, but when you tie the sutures, the, the ligament comes with you. So then the quality is not so good. In this case, you have to think uh, to use an augmentation after repair, or if you are uh, more comfortable with a, a ligament plasty, a ligament plasty. Actually, another new technique which I learned today from you is a fantastic that anterior inferior tibia fibular ligament where you can detach proximally and attach to the talus. That was a beautiful technique. So when you yeah. decide to do then AA TFL transfer or uh, internal bracing, how do you choose between these two? So uh, if I have a patient with a completely resorption of the superior fascicle of anterior talofibular ligament, I will use this uh, distal fascicle. In the rest of the cases, I would prefer an internal brace. So a, a suture augmentation, because this suture augmentation, you will expand uh, five minutes more surgery. For a ligament transfer, you need half an hour to do it. Okay. So I think it's faster, the internal phrase is faster, has, uh, is uh, biological uh, uh, acceptable. And uh, yeah, if you know how to do, this is not a risky uh, uh, procedure. Uh, in, uh, okay, Abhishek, do you have any question? Yeah, yeah. so uh, in the in, in your videos, there was fantastic visualization. So what, what is the tip of uh, getting such a great visualization? Because I don't think you, you're using any kind of distraction methods. So how do you make sure that you get uh, a good visualization? So for, um, you, you said uh, for the anchors? Yeah. What is the, okay. Oh, to to so, look at. To, or, or to look this, the area? To look or for, to every, look for everything. Yeah. everything, yes. everything. So, okay, so I, I, will, I never use uh, distraction. If you use distraction, uh, the problem is that you will have problems to see the lateral gutter. So you're, uh, uh, you have to avoid distraction and then to see the lateral gutter, you can use, of course, an anterolateral approach. The problem is that your approach is too close to the area that you are working on. So I will never recommend to introduce the scope in the anterolateral area, in the anterolateral portal. So <clears throat> my recommendation is always <clears throat> to use a anterior medial approach, but this approach, the more central as possible. Some surgeons, they propose an antero anterocentral portal the problem of the anterocentral portal is that you have a risk of injury of the uh, deep peroneal nerve and the uh, 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 tibial artery. So uh, the, uh, to avoid this risk, make an anterior medial portal, but really, really central portal. I mean, you have, this is the, the tibialis anterior. This is the medial area. Your portal has to be not here, just here, on the tendon. So if you work in dorsiflexion, the tendon is relaxed. So then you can move laterally and make your portal here. And then your tendon will protect from the deep peroneal nerve and from the tibial arteria, the tibial artery. So in this, if you do this portal uh, as, as central as possible, you can arrive easily to the lateral gutter no, no distraction, dorsiflexion, and you will see easily this area. So then when you make your uh, anterolateral uh, portal a little bit distal from the joint line and just lateral to the nerve, uh, sorry, medial to the nerve, to the superficial peroneal nerve. Uh, uh, when you highlight the nerve, you know that you have to make an inversion and then the nerve is tight. You can highlight at this moment 
but this is the most medial position of the nerve. When you make the foot in, the, in neutral position on dorsiflexion, the nerves runs laterally at about half centimeter. So then if you make your portal just medial to the landmark, you will never injure the superficial peroneal nerve. Once you have both portals, dorsiflexion, so then you grasp the ligament and the, uh, the, the landmark for the anchors are for the, uh, distal, for the uh, fibular anchor is just at the distal point of the basal ligament here on, the, on, the, on this point. And then for the, if you want to make an internal brace, the second anchor is in the talon neck. And then you have to look for the talon insertion of the anterior talon fibular ligament and just anterior, there is uh, the point for your second anchor. And now since there are so many options to treat, uh, if you have a poor fascicle, a superior fascicle, the ligament is not good. How do you decide whether you're going to do uh, internal bracing or you're going to do reconstruction or whether you're going to do the biological transfer of a ATIFL? So what is the decision-making uh, factor regarding these treatment choices in between these treatment choices? Yeah, uh, of course, if you have no ligament remnant, you have no options. Is just reconstruction with a ligament plasty. In the rest of the cases, a professional player or a very active patient that you want the, the patient needs to uh, recover faster, uh, I will always use an internal brace. Because when you use a biological augmentation, you need to immobilize a little bit more time. Not three to four weeks, but maybe two to three weeks. Okay. So with, uh, not, with the suture augmentation, it is not necessary to mobilize. So okay. I think that, that probably in most of the patients, I will recommend uh, non-biological augmentation. Jody, just, just, just for my knowledge, I want to ask one question. When you do your this uh, uh, internal brace, how much plantar flexor do you take? 15 degree? Uh, so plantar flexion means uh, in these cases, point, I, I, I will do, yeah, yeah, I will do uh, maximum plantar flexion. Maximum for the yeah. internal base type because because we, we all do the uh, plantar flexion for this thing. So yeah, maximum, yeah. Inter, inter, the, maximum the, the idea of the internal brace is to protect mainly the superior fascicle. Okay. So the superior fascicle is tight in plantar flexion. So then make in plantar flexion, maybe not maximum, but close to maximum, and then introduce the internal brace. To the second anchor, sorry. Then they introduce the second anchor. In the past, I did the internal brace in a neutral position and was great in most of the patients, but I have some patients that start to have some problems because they try to force the plantar flexion and uh, if it's not, it was not possible in most of the patients to, to force the plantar flexor because they start to have some complaints, some pain in the area. And then uh, uh, still now uh, that I, I have some patients that uh, I, I, I fix the second anchor in a neutral position, uh, I have to cut sometimes the suture. But if you do in a plantar flexion, a completely plantar flexion, you will never have problems because of the tight of the suture of the suture. Okay. Uh, Excellent. Uh, Obviously, uh, do you have any question on the channel? Yeah, there's, channel? there's one question from my colleague, Dr. Parikshit uh, from Mumbai. Uh, is there a way to confirm the execution of ghoul modification part of the repair when we are doing it arthroscopically? Um, you know, uh, you, you, I think that you are asking something like uh, Ips Tourne modification or something like that, I suppose. So, um, yeah, I think that, that there is an option to modify the, 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 the current arthroscopic Boston goal. Um, but uh, this is not my, my preferable uh, technique. Uh, I, I don't like to match the Boston goal. But uh, yeah, there is some options to have a, a flap 
of the retinaculum to, to boil a flap of the retinaculum arthroscopically. I, I, I never do this, but uh, yeah, probably it's a good option to, because uh, uh, most of the patients that they do this uh, bolstering, arthroscopic bolstering goal, they have not this superlateral band. And uh, if the retinaculum has not this superlateral band, this is 80% of patients, they have not this superlateral band. So then your bolstering goal is not really a bolstering goal. It's, uh, yeah, you, you grasp the retinaculum, but the retinaculum is, is uh, uh, close to the bone, to the fibular bone, but never arrives to the fibular bone. Okay. There's one question on YouTube. Uh, ATFL insertion is into the neck or the dome of uh, Tyler. So they, he wants to know what is the location of the placement of the anchor into the talus for ATF. Uh, the superior fascicle. You, you're talking yeah. in the superior yeah. fascicle. So, um, look, I will, I will do here. Uh, uh, I will draw, okay, for you. You can see this? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you have your talus dome, okay? And then when you go to the lateral gutter, yeah. there is a triangular shape area a triangular shape area without cartilage in the talon neck, in the lateral side. So if you divide this triangular shape area in the middle, the posterior part is for the attachment of the superior fascicle. Okay, so then okay. how to localize this point? Go to the lateral uh, talon neck and then localize this triangular shape area without cartilage and in the base and in the half, posterior half, there is the insertional area. Great. A little bit difficult with this draw, right? No, no, no. But, <laughs> oh, but we could understand. <laughs> those who are, those who are doing this, they will be definitely understanding the beautiful explanation you have given to them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, Jody, Jody uh, I think there is no more question, Abhishek. One more. No, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sundar. Jody won't mind. I think because he has got a vast majority, I mean, experience in doing all arthroscopic repair for the superior fascicle uh, tears. So what, uh, what is your failure rate and how do you approach if the patient comes back for revision? That's a good question. So um, when, when I did just, uh, when I do just the all inside repair without augmentation, uh, a few percentage of patients back for some complaints, not for instability, for some complaints. In these cases, of course, I'll repeat the MRI. Uh, sometimes I inject the area. If I, if I see the MRI and I say, okay, the ligament looks fine. It is repair. There is not, not, there is not a new injury but the patient has some pain, sometimes, sometimes I inject the area, sometimes, just to reduce the pain and to, to know what happens. What injection? Yeah, one injection in the area um, with corticoid. Okay, steroid, corticoid steroid. Uh, yeah, so, sometimes the, the pain disappear and then the problem is solved. But uh, sometimes never disappear, so in that cases, Probably the problem is a scar tissue in the area. So then I propose in these cases, okay, uh, the pain never disappear. You have a scar tissue. If it's uh, not disappearing in a few months, I will propose to debride the area and that's all. With internal brace, if there is too tight, even if you inject or whatever you do, it never works. So in these cases, I will always propose to obtain a new MRI just to see everything, if everything is okay. And then to debride the area uh, arthroscopically and to cut the suture tape. So that means uh, uh, disconnect the internal brace. Okay. And that's all. Okay. Yeah. So I think, Abhishek, there is no more question. Yeah. Andeep, is there any question on the YouTube, your side? Pradeep? No, 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 we asked one. I think okay. you have...
we so, have covered all the area i think because there is no 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 there is no further questions to ask to you okay okay but <laughs> we are excited too much it was a great talk great talk i have uh, listened to many people on foot and ankle but this was really really it as lucid and you properly just yes, sundar told like you you were very categorical and very patient and you were very lucid very lucid excellent talk jodi this is a Thank you. Clap, clap from calcutta clap from calcutta from the whole organizer from the indian arthroscopy society we are really honored that you came here and shared your knowledge and a vast experience and you will be happy to know that all this lecture will be archived in our indian arthroscopy uh, society website and who whenever whoever Uh, is logging in the uh, our website channel they even after 10 years probably they can find this lecture so it will be archived okay. for a lifetime such great thank you was well, a pleasure so um, uh, before we conclude i would like to invite uh, uh, all our viewers for our uh, next webinar that is webinar number 62 and uh, seventh uh, talk in the basic arthroscopy series and we have one of the greatest uh, stalwart in indian orthoscopy dr abhay narvekar and uh, panelist will be dr vikram maskar and dr ashish acharya so uh, that is uh, going to happen uh, at pm in the start time okay uh, thank you jodi for your uh, excellent talk thank you very much we learned a lot yeah yeah thank you was a pleasure thank you take, take care take care and this is a request from the society that whenever we will be contacting you please be uh, ready to share your knowledge uh, on different subjects we will be happy to listen to you again we will distribute will be a pressure <laughs> okay <laughs> thank you okay thank you bye 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 thank you bye 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 okay pradeep pradeep yes. end the live so yes. live stream is stop Uh, live streaming is stop stop okay. yes so okay, okay.